When you download a malicious executable and double click it, what happens in the background? Although every malware is different, they do perform certain actions that are quite similar. For example, after executing the malicious binary, a series of commands might run, such as ipconfig, who am I, nslookup, net user, and many other discovery commands to gather information in an automated fashion. Or persistence might occur in a form of a service creation or a scheduled task, so the malware can then survive a reboot. But there is one action that majority of the malicious binaries perform, and that is to establish a command and control session. Welcome to day 18 of the 30 day my D for SOC analyst challenge, which is a challenge that I created for the sole purpose of helping aspiring SOC analysts obtain practical experience in 30 days. If you're interested in following along with this challenge, I would highly recommend that you pause this video and start from day one if you haven't done so already. In this video, you will learn more about what command and control is, aka C2, why is establishing a C2 important, what are some of the common tools and frameworks that are used in the wild, and I'll pick out one framework named Mythic, and we'll go over what it is and how does it work. Let's begin with command and control, aka C2, or C and C. To answer what is command and control, I'll use a common framework that I would highly recommend that you become familiar with. And this is the MITRE ATT&CK framework. On their site, they mentioned that command and control consists of techniques that adversaries may use to communicate with systems under their control within a victim's network. In other words, command and control is where an attacker would have control over a victim's computer so they can perform various actions on it to achieve their actions on objective, aka their goal. Now, why is establishing a C2 important for an attacker? Well, you might have already guessed it, but it's so they can perform additional actions to again be one step closer to their actions on objective. This could be stealing credentials and move laterally, steal sensitive information such as financial or health records, or even execute ransomware. Whatever the case may be, in order for an attacker to do damage in an environment, they must have access into it. And one of the more common ways to achieve this access is through a command and control channel. Based on the MITRE ATT&CK framework, there are a total of 18 techniques as of recording that an attacker could establish a command and control session. And I'll leave a link down below for you to learn more about it. So what are the common tools and frameworks that are used in the wild? For the sake of this video, I'll go over four, but do note that there are a ton of different tools out there and it'll be an extremely long video if I went over all of them. Let's begin with the first one, which is Metasploit. If you're familiar with Kali Linux, you might have already played around with a popular framework called Metasploit. If not, you can check out my How to Build a Basic Home Lab video where we exploit a machine using Metasploit. This framework is owned by the company called Rapid7 and is quite easy to use. It comes with many different types of exploits and auxiliaries where you can probe target machines to determine if they're vulnerable to a particular exploit. And if they are, well, that host is toast. <laughs> the second one is Cobalt Strike. Although this is a commercial product built for adversary emulation by the folks over at Fortra, this C2 tool is commonly seen in compromised environments. The good news is that because it is quite common, thankfully the industry has come up with detections to help analysts detect Cobalt Strike. And one resource that you can use is called the DFIR report. If your goal is to become a SOC analyst, I would highly recommend you become familiar on how to detect common C2 frameworks such as Cobalt Strike. The next one is called Sliver. Sliver is an open source adversary emulation framework created by Bishop Fox. And this framework, just like the others, are quite easy to set up and get started with, which makes it both convenient and dangerous. Sliver supports many different ways to establish a C2 connection, such as MTLS, HTTP, HTTPS, DNS, or WireGuard. And based on Bishop Fox's site, Sliver is designed to be an open source alternative to Cobalt Strike. And that is pretty awesome. The last one that I'll mention is Mythic, which is the one that we'll be using in the 30 day challenge. Mythic is a C2 framework built with Golang, Docker, Docker Compose, and a web browser user interface. By using Mythic, operators will have the ability to track their payloads and C2 profiles, which is quite nice as you'll be able to answer the question of what payload triggered this callback, or why is there a callback? And speaking of C2 profiles, Mythic uses these profiles for agents so it knows how to communicate back to the Mythic server. As a recording, there are a total of 21 different agents that are available. 
And there you have it. You should now have a better understanding of what command and control is, why it's important for attackers, and what are some of the common tools and frameworks used in the wild. In the next video, we'll begin crafting up how we want to attack our Windows server to eventually set up our own mythic server, and finally deploy an agent on the Windows server, so then it can establish a successful C2 session back to us. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.